Welcome to Fantasia, Home the Melodious. My name's Azalia, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys another update to my Lunar Light deck. Now, before we begin, I just want to give a huge thank you to everyone who went to Twitter and voted on my poll that I had up about a day ago. Um, this poll was between Standard Lunar Lights and the Eclipse Lunar Light builds, and the Standard Lunar Light build managed to win, so that is what we're going to be getting into today. Now, if you don't want to miss future polls, make sure you follow me on Twitter. Link, of course, is always in the description down below, so uh, go check that out so you don't miss out on any of these future updates. So anyway, without any further ado, let's just jump right into this. So starting off, we are playing with three copies of Luna Light Black Sheep. Of course, this does not change because Black Sheep is the main searcher in the deck for our polymerization, which is, of course, the main fusion spell for the Luna Light archetype. Black Sheep also has a phenomenal effect where if you use her as a fused material, she can recover Lunar Light monsters either from your graveyard or from your extra deck. So that's a really good way to uh, recur some of our resources that we spend on our summons. So definitely run three copies of her. So the next card that we play, of course, is going to be three copies of Luna Light Bl uh, Blue Cat. Now, Luna Light Blue Cat, uh, you still need three copies of her because she is a floater for the deck. And if you don't manage to open up with some of your combo starters, Blue Cat is actually a phenomenal way for us to float and stall a little bit during the opponent's battle phase. But it's also a great way for you to get to what you need, which is going to be Kaleido Chick, um, if you crash into your opponent during your own battle phase. Or you can trigger it with things like Dark Hole and things like that if you're running those cards. So so Blue Cat is definitely a phenomenal card, and it has the effect where if she is special summoned, you can target one Luna Light monster that you control and double its attack points. So this is really great for us uh, to help us go and push for those OTKs, um, especially by boosting our Panther Dancer or our Leo Dancer uh, to insane levels of attack. Okay, so now moving on into the main card of the deck now, it's going to be three copies of Luna Light Kaleido Chick. Kaleido Chick is definitely one of the most powerful cards for this archetype that's been released. And Kaleido Chick is just so fantastic because it helps us with so many setup plays, and you want to see her as soon as possible on your first turn. So Kaleido Chick has the effect where once per turn you can uh, send one Luna Light monster from your deck or your extra deck to the graveyard, and then the name of this face-up card on the field uh, is actually um, changed to whatever monster that you sent from your deck or extra deck to the graveyard. So that's actually really nice, because then what she can do is if you send a Cat Dancer, she can be treated as a Cat Dancer for you to summon Panther Dancer. If you send Panther Dancer, she can be treated as Panther Dancer for you to summon Leo Dancer. Um, but outside of that, she actually is phenomenal for thinning out your deck and setting up your graveyard for future play. So you can send things like your Lunar Light Blue Cats, uh, you can send your Crimson Fox, Lunar Light Wolf, whatever you need to. And Kaleido Chick actually opens up a lot of potential with your Lunar Light Black Sheep, because Black Sheep has the effect where you can actually just discard it, and instead of searching for a polymerization, you can actually um, just add a Lunar Light monster from your graveyard back to your hand. So you can potentially just add back whatever your Kaleido Chick sent to the graveyard. You know, if you want to search out a Lunar Light Wolf, that's an easy way to do that. Lunar Light Tiger, whatever you need at the moment. So Kaleido Chick not only helps us set up, but she also helps us potentially search, thin out the deck, and um, just make some crazy plays. Now she also has the effect where um, if she's sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can add one polymerization from your graveyard back to your hand. So this basically makes it so that fusion recovery is obsolete. So you don't need to run that dead spell card that uh, is a brick most of the time if you open it in your opening hand. Uh, now you have Kaleido Chick, which is uh, again, extra recursion for your fusion summons. Um, really, really good and basically on par with Luna Light Black Sheep. The, the, these two cards just make the archetype fantastic. Now, um, Kaleido Chick has another effect where if this card is actually banished, um, you can activate this effect where your opponent cannot activate any effects during the battle phase. And that's fantastic protection for when we're just swinging for large amounts of damage. Now, of course, you can trigger this effect with things like a Lure of Darkness, um, or by just Lunar Light Wolf banishing this from your graveyard. Um, when you're going for your Panther Dancers or your Leo Dancers. So very, very easy effect to trigger in this deck, and it's so, so useful for us, um, especially because this deck is very, very heavily battle-oriented. Okay, so the next card that we play is one copy of Luna Light Crimson Fox. You only need one copy of this because of the fact that she doesn't really come up too often. It's not very often that you're going to target one of your opponent's monsters and make its attack zero so you can swing uh, for a game. Um, that comes up sometimes, but really it's it's a situational card, and most of the time you're just going to be sending it to the graveyard with Kaleido Chick. Um, 
so that you can give your monster some additional protection because you can banish her from the graveyard to negate a effect that targets one of your Lunalite monsters and then both players gain a thousand life points. Um, I don't know why they have the gaining a thousand life points effect attached to it but uh, Crimson Fox is still really really good. It's just a bit situational and you don't really need to run more than one. Okay, so the next card that we play is uh, a card that you haven't seen me play in a very long time because her usefulness really... she doesn't really have any, right? But she does have a little niche now that uh, Clyde Chick is here, and this is going to be one copy of Luna Light Purple Butterfly. Now, Purple Butterfly is not as useful because her, she has a level of 3, so she's not very useful for XYZ summons, but the good thing is that because she has a level 3 with this awkward level, she has a lot of synergy with cards like Gofu, where you can easily go for things like Cyframe Lord Omegas. Now, you can easily send this from your deck to the graveyard uh, with your Luna Light Kaleido Chick, and she also, she also has the effect where you can banish her from the graveyard to summon a uh, Luna Light monster from your hand to your set field. So this is another way to potentially swarm your field with additional monsters to go for your Link summons, for your XYZ plays, but it's also a great way for you to summon your uh, Luna Light Blue Cat straight from your hand, especially if you don't have access to Luna Light Wolf to complete your Pendulum Scales to go for that Pendulum Summon. So this is a, a easy way for you to close out the game with um, just doubling something's attack value and then swinging over your opponent's monsters. And that's also one of the reasons why Crimson Fox isn't too useful, because you can easily OTK anyway regardless of your opponent's monsters attack values uh, if you're boosting something like a Leo Dancer to 7000 attack. So Crimson Fox, uh, again, has its niches and same with purple butterfly they're just um, they're there to help you out but they're not really the main focus of the deck okay so uh, with that being said moving on we're going to go on into three copies of luna light tiger of course luna light tiger being a fantastic card is basically a monster reborn but twice in the same card so um, again, her pendulum effect, uh, you can once per turn, you can target one Luna Light monster in your graveyard and special summon it, but its effects are negated, it cannot attack, and is destroyed during the end phase. So, this is kind of useful though, um, the destruction during the end phase. Of course, if you have the blue cat, you can just let the blue cat get destroyed and special summon another blue cat from your deck, but if you didn't use Kaleido Chick's recovery effect that turn, if you bring back a Kaleido Chick and during the end phase it gets destroyed because you couldn't use it for any other materials or anything, Kaleido Chick can actually add that polymerization from your graveyard back to your hand. Uh, so that's actually kind of cool. So that's one of the little utility uses of Luna Light Tiger outside of just bringing back your monsters for fusion plays and rank force. So yeah, unfortunately though, without Zodiacs uh, in the in the game anymore, really, uh, with Bravo gone and Dryden gone, uh, you don't have many ways to actually pop your own Luna Light Tiger in your scale. So um, that that effect is really more or less up to whether or not your opponent knows what your deck is doing or whether or not they're going to destroy your spell and trap cards. But um, yeah, that effect doesn't really come up too often anymore. Okay, so to close out the Luna Light monsters, we're playing one copy of Luna Light Wolf, and of course, this you only need one copy of this. Like I said, you can always send it to the graveyard with your Kaleido Chick, add it back with your Black Sheep, things like that. Um, Luna Light Wolf is just a really great way to go for a Leo Dancer, um, especially because now that we just send a Panther Dancer from our extra deck to our graveyard with our Kaleido Chick, if we uh, so need it. Okay, so that does it for all the Luna Light monsters. Next off, we're going to go into uh, the Dark Engine that we play. Now, I expanded upon this Dark Engine just a little bit and changed up some of the ratios so that this deck can stay a little bit more concise and consistent. So what we have here is two copies of Summoner Monk. Now, Summoner Monk, of course, is fantastic because we can summon another level 4 monster straight from our deck. And the main monster that we're going to be summoning is going to be Luna Light Kaleido Chick. Again, this deck just needs to access to Kaleido Chick as soon as possible for it to flourish. Now, Summoner Monk, of course, is a great way for us to discard any dead spell cards in our hand because we run things like Pot of Desires and Lunar Light Perfume, so um, you can get value out of those cards just by pitching it to the graveyard. Perfume has a graveyard effect, and if you draw into multiple Desires, you can always pitch those as well. Okay, so the next card that we play is going to be two copies of Armageddon Knight. Now, Armageddon Knight, same reasoning behind the Summoner Monk, we want access to our Kaleido Chick. Now, Armageddon Knight is fantastic because when you send your Kaleido Chick or your Crimson Fox to the graveyard, they, they can actually get their effects of adding back a polymerization or changing an opponent's monster's attack value to zero, respectively. So that's why it's a fantastic card. But you can also just send your Kaleido Chick to the graveyard first thing, and then use your Tiger, Perfume, or whatever to bring it back before you um, go on from your plays from there. All right, and then the next card that we play is going to be one copy of Blackwing Zephros the Elite. Now, Zephros, uh, of course, another target for your Armageddon Knight 
to send from your deck to the graveyard, and Zephyros is a great way for you to bounce back your Lunalite Tiger, especially now that Lunalite Tiger, again, we don't have access to Zodiacs, so we don't have access to Dryden that can easily pop our scales. Um, Zephyros is a great way to reset your Lunalite Tiger in your scale, so you can use the Revival effect again that turn. So um, we can't really abuse Tiger as much as we used to, maybe not until we get more uh, Link monsters that allow us to swarm the field with rank 4s, because you can still do it with Tornado Dragon, but the problem is that um, when you summon Tornado Dragon, usually most of your resources have already gone to um, either setting up the field or have gone into a Link Summon, so you don't really have any follow-up plays after you pop your Tiger. So that's the main problem that this deck has right now, is we don't have enough generic Link monsters to work with to be able to swarm our field. But hopefully that will change in the near future. So yeah, one copy of Zephyros, definitely pretty good for now. Uh, the other card that we play is going to be three copies of Blackwing Gofu the Vague Shadow. Now, uh, Gofu is a fantastic card, and you definitely want to see it in your opening hand, because this is a free uh, and easy way for us to get access to things like Link Spider and Proxy Dragon, or even just a Deco Talker straight out of, the, uh, out of the gate. And that just opens up so many different plays for us where we can actually establish, you know, Deco Talker with a rank 4 and a fusion, and boards like that, where it's pretty solid, and your opponent will definitely have to think to try to get over it. Um, but otherwise, this deck is actually relatively slower compared to what it was, of course, um, pre-Links, but um, this deck can definitely hold its own if you play it correctly. Okay, so uh, with all those monsters out of the way, we're also playing three copies of Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit for our hand traps. Uh, of course, Ghost Ogre, fantastic card right now for hitting field spells, for hitting your opponent's monsters that activate on the field. Just a great way to disrupt our opponent's combos in general and put a halt to their plays. And with Luna Lights, if your opponent stops in a suboptimal uh, play where they leave like a very weak monster on their side of the field, say like a quick fix or something like that, it's very, very easy for us to OTK with things like Cat Dancer, Panther Dancer, or Leo Dancer, just any of our fusions uh, can just destroy our opponent. And the last uh, hand trap that we play is going to be one copy of Maxi, of course, because Maxi allows us to get a lot of draws while uh, deterring our opponent from continuing their turn. Again, hopefully with them uh, ending with a suboptimal field and you getting, you know, maybe one, two, or three cards out of this uh, so that you can potentially OTK on your next turn. So yeah, that does it for all the monsters. Pretty monster heavy, but um, with all of the cards like Summoner Monk, Armageddon Knight, and things like that, it's very, very easy to thin out the deck. Especially with Kaleido Chick, you know, you can trigger it multiple times a turn and just send a lot of your monsters from the deck to the graveyard. Okay, so that does it for the monsters. Next off, we're going to go into the spell cards. So starting off these spell cards, we have three copies of Fire Formation Tenki. Now, Tenki, of course, is the searcher for the uh, deck. You can search out your Black Sheep, your Lunalite Tiger, or your Kaleido Chick with this, and those are your main cards that you want to see in your opening hand for you to start most of your combos. So that's why you need three copies of these. Basically, any substitute for any of the Lunalites except for um, Lunalite Wolf because it's too high of a level. So the next card that we play is going to be two copies of Polymization. Of course, this is the main fusion spell for the deck. And then we also follow up with one copy of Fusion Substitute. Uh, I really do like Fusion Substitute, and I still love it, um, because the fact that it, you can just banish it from your graveyard to return a fusion monster from your graveyard back to your extra deck, and then you get an extra draw. So not only are you getting value out of your um, plays, but you also get to put back some important cards, such as Starving Venom and things, because we because we don't have access to Digusto Emerald anymore, because that card got banned as well. Um, thanks, UDX. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's why I, I highly recommend you try out one copy of Fusion Substitute if you're one of those players that are really adamant about playing three polymerization and zero Fusion Substitutes. Okay, so the next card that we play, uh, we're playing three copies of Lunar Light Perfume. Now, Perfume is uh, another searcher for the deck, and it's actually really useful now because uh, we can't abuse Tiger as much. So being able to see Perfume in your opening hand is actually fantastic. And again, this has a great synergy with cards like Summoner Monk, where you just pitch it um, to your graveyard to summon your uh, Armageddon Knight or Kaleido Chick straight from your deck, and then you can banish the Perfume and discard another potential card from your hand uh, to go for additional searches and whatever you need to set up your plays. 
Okay, so the next card that we play, we're playing three copies of Allure of Darkness. We want consistency in this deck, and of course, Allure of Darkness has a lot of synergy with cards like your Kaleido Chick, where if you get banished, you get effects as well. And because we are running things like Cypher and Lord Omega, whatever you banish won't permanently be banished. It, you can you have the potential um, to actually summon your Omega and put things back into your graveyard, which is kind of nice. But Allure of Darkness, definitely a fantastic tool, especially if you uh, use your Kaleido Chick, um, you know, to f go for materials and fuse and recover polymizations and all that and after all your plays you, you returned it to your hand with like let's say a lunar light black sheep then you can use your lure of darkness uh, after you've established your field to banish your kaleido chick make sure your opponent cannot do anything during the battle phase before you go and swing for game Okay, so the next card that we play is some more draw power in this deck. Um, we play two copies of Pot of Desires. Fantastic card because we run a lot of three ups in this deck. You know, three Kaleido Chicks, three Tigers, three Black Sheep, three Blue Cats. Um, and Pot of Desires is just a great way for you to get more cards. We want to see more cards so we can continue our combos. And this can also potentially uh, fix uh, some dead hands that you have. So Pot of Desires is definitely great. And again, like I said, you have Omega, which allows you to tap into your banished pile. Even if, that even if those cards are banished face down, Omega can still put them back into your graveyard. So that's a neat interaction that these cards have. So uh, to cap off the rest of the spell cards, we are playing one copy of Reinforcement of the Army. It's just a potentially a third copy of Armageddon Knight. Uh, it just makes it so we play less monsters and we have an additional spell in the deck, uh, so, which is kind of nice because Summoner Monk can sometimes just pitch this um, instead of, let's say, a more important card like Tenki. Okay, we also play one copy of Foolish Burial. Foolish Burial is great for getting Zephyros into the graveyard, you know, Kaleido Chick to the grave. You can even send things like Crimson Fox or your uh, Purple Butterfly uh, in situations where you might need to use them. So Foolish Burial is just a really good utility card. And then, of course, we're, since this deck likes to go second, which is why we're also playing Hand Traps in this deck, um, I like to play some Board Wipes. So one copy of Dark Hole is great for clearing the field, and then also one copy of Raigeki to cap things off. Now, Dark Hole is here because it also has synergy with your Blue Cat. If you don't manage to open up very well and you're going second, you can normal summon your Blue Cat, Dark Hole the field, so you're clearing out all your opponent's monsters as well as your own Blue Cat. Then Blue Cat can float into your uh, Kaleido Chick, and then Kaleido Chick can go and start off your setups for your combos in main phase too. So that's why I think that Dark Hole is a pretty good fit for this deck. So yeah, that does it for all of these spell cards, and that does it for the main deck. So next off, we're going to go into the side deck. All right, so for the side deck, starting off, we are playing three copies of DD Crow. Now, DD Crow is fantastic against both meta decks and just like rogue decks that you might run into with your friends or at locals, mostly because DD Crow hits so many different things in the graveyard. Um, you can hit, you know, spiral monster pieces and things like that. You can hit Burning Abyss, Paleozoics, Light Swarms, Infernoids. It's just a, such a wide variety of decks that DD Crow hits. It's just a fantastic hand trap to have in your deck. Now, DD Crow also is a dark attribute monster, so if you draw into it and you don't need it at the time, you can always just use it as fodder for your Lure of Darkness or anything like that. Okay, so the next cards that we play, we're actually playing the Kaiju Engine in the side deck, and I'll get into why um, after I introduce the monster. So we're playing one copy of Gamma Seal. Gamma Seal being the lowest attack monster is always fantastic for us to be able to run over, run over with our fusions. Uh, we have one copy of Kumungus, the Sticky String Kaiju. Now with Gamma Seal and Kumungus, 2200 and 2400 attack, our uh, Cat Dancer can actually run over both of these. So it's good to have um, both of these specifically because they're low enough in attack value that we can actually run over relatively easily with our um, boss monsters. Now the next card that I play is one copy of Gadarla. Gadarla is 2700 attack, which means our Panther Dancer can actually run over this as well. So Panther Dancer can potentially run over any of these three Kaijus, uh, which is great for us because Panther Dancer is fairly easily accessible, especially now that we have Kaleido Chick in the TCG. So the next two cards that I play are one copy of Thunder King uh, with 3300 attack and then one copy of, of course, uh, Jizakiru with also 3300 attack. Now, um, the reason why these are here is, of course, when you slumber your opponent, you want to give yourself the bigger kaiju so that you have a larger beat stick than your opponent does. And because all of these are different names and all of them have basically different attack values, it's very easy for us to choose, pick and choose um, which ones we want to give to our opponent, which one we want to keep for ourselves. And if you do draw into one of the bigger ones, of course, you can 
can just um, summon it to your side of the field if your opponent already has a uh, kaiju on their side of the field. Or if you just give it to your opponent, Leo Dancer can still run over both of these monsters. So it's not too big of an issue there. Okay, so of course in conjunction with the kaijus, we play one copy of Interrupted Kaiju Slumber, and this card is just basically like another field wipe, another dark hole Raigeki type card for us to help clear the field, summon some kaijus, and then we can easily OTK from there because we can clear out their kaiju and just swing directly for game. Okay, so the next cards that we uh, cards that we play, we're playing three copies of Twin Twisters. Now, Twin Twisters, we, we don't run um, Spell and Trap removal in the main deck, because it's not really too necessary. Not too many decks are playing uh, a bunch of back row right now. Most of the back row is going to be sided in for games two and three. So Twin Twisters is a great way to counteract that. Um, and, of course, we don't mind being able to discard cards. We have so many cards that function in the graveyard or that we can just revive from the graveyard with like Lunar Light Tiger, Lunar Light Perfume, and things like that, where we don't really care about the cost. And to uh, wrap things up, we're also playing three copies of Solemn Strike, just for those games where uh, you have to go first. You would side in the Solemn Strikes, maybe side out some of your one-of cards like Purple Butterfly or things like that that you don't really need or don't really want to see in your opening hand. So yeah, Solemn Strike is just a way for us to cover some of our weaknesses for when we're going first that we can't establish too powerful of a field. Um, so yeah, that does it for the side deck. Next off, we're going to go into the extra deck. Alright, so for the extra deck, starting off, we are playing one copy of Link Spider. Link Spider is fantastic, of course, with the Gofu tokens, and it just opens up an extra um, slot for us to summon our extra deck monsters to right under the uh, Link Spider. So when we go for our combos, m most of the time you're going to be using your tokens for things like uh, Proxy Dragon, but um, we don't actually need to do that all the time, especially if you're going for Omega. Really what you need to do is just summon your Link Spider. You can summon your Omega under it, you can banish your Omega for something else, and you can summon another extra deck monster under your Link Spider, potentially like a rank 4 like Baguska or things like that. So that's why Link Spider is actually really useful in this deck for that reason. But of course you can always go for the standard um, play with Link Spider into Proxy Dragon, and then you can go for something like your, uh, your Deco Talker right here. Uh, so Deco Talker, of course, fantastic because it has the bottom left and bottom right uh, zones that it opens up so that you can go for uh, rank force and fusion plays as well. So one Gofu can just potentially just make that Deco Talker for you and it's just a very good tool. Now, of course, we are still waiting for that Dark Link monster to come uh, and get released into the game so that two Dark monsters can obviously just make the bottom left, bottom right markers very much like Mrs. Radiant, Miss Star Boy, and things like that. So um, once that comes out, Luna Lights will get a huge boost that we can finally go back to comboing off with a lot of... Uh, powerful fields and combinations, but until then we kind of have to play a little bit more reserved and um, kind of manage our resources, kind of grind out the first couple of turns before we get things set up so we can go for a huge push with our fusions. So the last uh, Link monster that I play is actually one copy of Akashic Magician. Now this might seem like a weird choice for this deck, but it's actually pretty decent um, for us to swarm the field with fusion monsters because when you have something like a Cat Dancer or a Panther Dancer in your extra monster zone, most of the time you can't really get rid of it. So what you can actually do is you summon the Akashic Magician, which requires two monsters with the same type. So of course, Lunar Lights being all Beast Warrior type monsters, you can easily summon another Lunar Light monster, make Akashic Magician wh with your um, fusion and whatever other Lunar Light monster you have, and then summon the Akashic Magician. She has a down arrow that allows you to summon um, more monsters, basically, from your extra deck. And also, whenever you send your uh, fusions to the graveyard, like let's say you sent a Panther Dancer, now if you have access to your Luna Light Wolf, you can easily make something like a Leo Dancer, whereas you potentially couldn't before because you didn't have enough materials to just fuse with her regularly using Panther Dancer and two other Luna Light monsters. So Akashic Magician is a great way for us to kind of play around and manipulate our field so that we can um, go and swing for game where we normally wouldn't be able to. Okay, so that does it for the, all the Link Monsters. Uh, next off, we're going to go into the XYZs. So for the XYZ, starting off, we're playing one copy of Gagaga Samurai. Now, Gagaga Samurai is a fantastic card for us to just, again, swing for extra damage. Um, it's a great way to actually clear our opponent's field, especially if they're playing um, things where they summon tokens and other things like that. Uh, Gagaga Samurai just helps us clear the field. So with 1900 attack and by just detaching one XYZ material from it, you can actually just make him attack twice during the battle phase. So that's why he's actually really good. And coupled with uh, um, some of your larger fusions, you can actually potentially just win you games by giving you that extra attack that you normally wouldn't be able to get. 
Okay, so the next uh, card that we play is one copy of Tornado Dragon. Uh, this is our innate um, spell and trap removal that we have uh, access to going into game one. So Tornado Dragon is pretty good. Um, most of the time you're going to be hitting things like field spells because your opponent is probably going to get rid of Tornado Dragon uh, before you get to before they get to their main phase two or end phase where you can just pop their set back row. So they're probably going to run over it by battle, but you can actually potentially stop them from going off during main phase one by deterring them uh, from playing their field spells and things like that. Okay, so the next card that we play is one copy of number 41, Baguska, the terribly tired uh, Tapir. Now, Baguska is uh, pretty, probably the more, um, probably going to be the most played XYZ monster in this deck because of the fact that our turn one plays are relatively weak. So, Baguska is actually a great way for us to stall out those first couple of turns. So, it has the effect where if it's in defense position, it changes all face up monsters on the field to defense position and then. Um, you can negate all activated effects of monsters uh, whose effects were activated while they were originally in defense position. So Baguska is just basically like a skill drain that you can turn off, and it's a fantastic card. Well, I guess it's more like a lose one turn. It's a lose one turn that you could potentially turn off on your own turn, um, and it's just so fantastic. It's absolutely incredible that they made this a rank four, and as a super rare, so it's pretty easily accessible as well. Um, but the cool thing to note is that Baguska can't put Link Monsters into defense position because Link Monsters can't be changed to defense position. So if you have cards like uh, Decode Talk or Proxy Dragon, things like that on your side of the field, and then you summon your Baguska, uh, you can still attack with those Link Monsters. It's just that your opponent can't um, use you know, their main deck monsters and other extra deck monsters in order to retaliate against you. So that's actually kind of neat uh, interaction that we have there. Okay, and the last XYZ monster that we play is one copy of Brotherhood, the Fire Fist, Tiger King. Of course, it's very easy to summon this with our Kaleido Chick now, because you can just summon Kaleido Chick, send another you know, Lunar Light monster, you know, Crimson Fox or Blue Cat, and then you can revive that with either Perfume or Tiger, and then you can go for your uh, Tiger King. Now, Tiger King can set your Tenki from your deck, you can go for an additional search, and also Tiger King acts as a skill drain where you can detach the material and negate the effects of all monsters on the field that are not Beast Warrior type monster. So um, you can potentially just negate any threatening cards before you continue your plays from there. But yeah, uh, Tiger King is definitely a strong opening play as well for you to set up for your searches. Okay, and uh, that does it for the XYZs, but I also have one Synchro, so I'm just going to throw it in right here. Of course, we're playing one copy of Cyframe Lord Omega. Fairly easy to summon if you have access to Gofu. Uh, you can use Gofu and Purple Butterfly. You can even use your Lunalight Tiger, and uh, it really depends on your setup, which one you're going to go for. Um, of course, Purple Butterfly is better to send to the graveyard, revive it with uh, Lunalite Tiger or Perfume, go for your Omega, and then Purple Butterfly is in the graveyard again, so you can banish it and potentially summon another Lunalite monster from your hand to continue your combos from there. But if you do uh, send your Lunalite Tiger to the graveyard with something like your Kaleido Chick, you can still definitely make it make your uh, Omega by just bringing it back like the usual means and going for your uh, Synchro 8. So yeah, that does it for the XYZs and Synchros. Uh, next off, we're going to go into the Fusions. So for the Fusion, starting off, we're playing with two copies of Luna Light Cat Dancer. Um, very important that you play two copies of this, because again, you can always summon one, but you always have one as a backup to send from your extra deck to the graveyard with your Kaleido Chick if you ever need to instantly climb up to a Panther Dancer instead of just fusing for the Cat Dancer and going up from there. So that's why two copies of Cat Dancer is pretty good. Normally, you're not going to be attacking too much with this monster, although she is a very fairly common card for you to summon on your first turn, because you can't be destroyed by battle, and um, if you summon it under something like Decode Talker, she also gets some targeting and protection and things like that. So it's uh, relatively nice to have on your side of the field. Of course, the monster we're going to be attacking the most with in this deck is going to be two copies of Lunar Light Panther Dancer. Now, Panther Dancer is, she got a huge boost when uh, Crimson Fox got released in the TCG because her weakness was that she could still be targeted by card effects. But now that Crimson Fox can protect her from targeting effects, and with cards like Decode Talker that can also protect her from targeting effects, um, she's become a monster where you can just run into all of your opponent's uh, monsters twice each and inflict a ton of damage to your opponent. So, again, fantastic fantastic card, and um, even though most of the time you're probably only going to be summoning one per game, it's good to have a second copy that you can send from your extra deck to the graveyard with your Kaleido Chick in order to go for an instant Leo Dancer if it's ever needed.
So speaking of which, we only play one copy of Luna Light Leo Dancer. You don't need more than uh, one copy of this. This card just ends the game. If you're if you summon Leo Dancer and you're not killing your opponent that turn, then something is probably wrong uh, with your play, and um, or it wasn't really the optimal time to summon your Leo Dancer. This is a great way for you to just swing for game. If you were to try to clear out your opponent's field, most of the time you would just go for your Panther Dancer, because not only can she deal damage while doing that, um, but you, you could potentially OTK your opponent if they have four or five monsters um, in their in attack position. Panther Dancer is a great way for you to clear out those fields. Leo Dancer, although she has the ability to nuke your opponent's field, Really, she's going to be here to just swing over your opponent's monsters and just attack directly for game uh, afterwards. So 3,500 damage to the face is a lot, um, especially if you boost it with Blue Cat. 7,000 damage is nothing to laugh at, <laughs> and it could potentially steal a lot of games. Now, st uh, speaking of stealing games, we're going to uh, cap off the extra deck with one copy of Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. And of course, this is a great way for us to utilize things like Summoner Monk, Armageddon Knight, and other things on the field that... Um, you can't be used to make your Luna Light fusions, but can definitely be used to make Starving Venom because they're still a dark attribute monster. So Starving Venom is a great way to, of course, um, attack over your opponent's monsters as well, especially if they have one very powerful monster on the field, uh, coupled with like some low attack monsters on the field. You can really easily deal upwards of three to 4,000 damage in a single hit and potentially just close up the game in that time. Uh, so yeah, that does it for the um, extra deck, and that does it for this deck profile. So thank you all so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, or found it helpful, please leave a like, subscribe for more Lunar Light content, and leave a comment down below letting me know what I can do to improve. And until next time, take care.